Have you ever scrolled through Twitter, I mean X, or any social media platform and saw an image that you like? Or how about you're scrolling on a web page and you happen to stumble upon an image that you like and then you think to yourself, hmm, I wish I could create an image that looks just like that. Well, guess what? You can. And you've actually been able to do this for a while. I actually made two other videos with a similar topic. But here's what's different. It's gotten a lot better and it now provides longer, more helpful, and even more accurate prompts. What I'm talking about today is the describe command in Midjourney. We're also gonna take things to the next level and really make these prompts create amazing and unique looking images. We're first gonna take the prompts that we get and then generate the typical images from them. But then we're gonna take those prompts and then 10X them and make them even better and get even more and more prompts. And these will be even more unique, therefore making your images so much better better than the one you originally found and wanted to duplicate. So here's an image I found not too long ago, and I actually thought it looked pretty cool. I thought to myself, how can I make an AI image that looks very similar to this one? But not only that, how can I improve it and make it look even better? That's what we're going to focus on right now. So the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have access to a prompts database or an actual place that you could store all these prompts that you're going to be receiving. Now, right now, what you're seeing is my Leonardo AI made Mega prompts database. However, many of these prompts are interchangeable, meaning the prompts you see right here, not only will they work fantastic in Leonardo AI, but you can use a lot of them in other tools like Midjourney, which that's the tool we're using today. So that is actually one way that we're going to improve our prompt today. We're going to add an assortment of these very unique keywords. And so then the other database I have is this mega prompts database right here. This is basically every single prompt imaginable. And so the unique things about these databases is that I add prompts to it every day. You'll have lifetime access to every new and updated prompt added. Okay, so I know I spend a lot of time on these databases, but that's very important and you'll see why in a second. So the first thing we'll do is just open up Midjourney or Discord and let's get right into it. If you're not familiar with the describe command, it's this simple. Once you're down here, you're doing everything the same. You're hitting that slash button, but instead of selecting imagine, you're going to select describe. Do you see it right here above my head? Make sure you select describe. Once I have it open, you'll see this dialog box directly above it. It's going to have two things, image or link. For today, we're going to be utilizing the image one. So select image. The next step will be this little drag and drop box will populate. All you have to do is quite simple. Just upload your file or your image. So you could do it by clicking on it and then selecting your image. But what I'll do, the most easiest thing to do is just to click and drag my actual image into this dialog box. I'm clicking and I'm dragging it into this window right here. Okay. Once it's in the window, just let go. As soon as you hit enter, you have to pay attention because right away, it's now going to appear right here into the main chat. Do you see it right here? Here is my image that I uploaded. I really like this image. I thought this would be a very cool image if I could figure out a way to create something similar. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. So now this populates and just like that, you're going to get four responses. So here are four prompts that will create this specific image. So in the past, this did work pretty well. I like the describe command. I use it often, but now the first thing you'll notice as far as the improvement is that the prompt has gotten much longer with many more details. So that's where this is going to come in so handy with the next step. So we can look at each one of these prompts and the first and easiest step we want to take is just let's just take these prompts and then just copy and paste them in the mid journey ourselves just to see what the original image made for us and how closely it came to duplicating it. That's really where we're going to take things up to the next level. What we're going to do then is just go back to the prompts database and then find some unique and specific keywords that sort of match the characteristics of the image, but then really liven things up. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to copy and paste all these images very quickly. I'm going to change all my dimensions to an aspect ratio of 16.9. Once all these images are created, we'll come back and we'll see which one duplicated it the most accurate way. Okay, now we're back over here in midjourney.com. And so it did make these images very nice. So that's pretty cool. Um, some of these are a little bit better than others, but nonetheless, they did a great job job. And once I hover over the ones I like, like this one looks pretty cool. The touch with the cars, the lines, and then even the sky is exactly how I wanted it. So let's say for an example, I like this one the best. I'll just copy and paste this prompt right here. I also like this one right here with that city in the background.
background. This one's cool too, with that skyline in the background. And then going through a few more of these, you can see they all look very similar to the original one that I wanted. Now, mind you, this is not an easy prompt to duplicate. There are a lot of things going on in the background. So kudos to this new describe command. When I would use the describe command in the past, it didn't nail it on the head as good as this one does right here. So there definitely has been an improvement. So with that said, let's find some of these prompts that we like the best, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and then copy a few of these out. So I'm gonna copy this one right here. Then what I'm gonna do next is come over here to my Airtable database and now enter this prompt and this image in this database. That way I can keep it and use it for reference going further. So if I wanna use some of these keywords or even duplicate this prompt again, I'll have it in my database. And then I can look at the visual aspect of it to quickly determine what sort of image it's gonna make this prompt specifically. Okay, now I went ahead and then put these images and prompts in the database. You could see I have them available right here. Okay, so I mentioned I also wanted to try these prompts in Leonardo AI as well. And as you can look on my page right here, you could see that these prompts actually did get it right. It did a phenomenal job. But the most impressive part is that utilizing these prompts or these images and then creating a motion or a video out of it in Leonardo AI. I took this actual image right here. Look at what an amazing job it did utilizing the Leonardo AI motion effect, transforming an image into a video. And I have to tell you, every time I use this, it's always being improved and it gets better and better each time. So pretty impressive with this one right here. But now let's take things a little bit further. And here is where the fun actually starts to begin. I'm going to take one of these prompts I used. Now, in fairness, I figure the one that says a wide angle, I'm most happy, I think, so far with the wide angle prompt. Okay, so we're going to use this one as just an example. Wide angle view of the sky. Now, I have Canva open and I have the prompt copied right here. Okay, now hold this thought because we're going to use Canva in a second. But first, let's go over to ChatGPT. Now, I posted in at the bottom a prompt generator, and here's what this is going to do. It's very simple. It basically says, ChatGPT, I'm going to give you a prompt. Based off my prompt, I then want you to rewrite it in 10 different and creative ways. So we're gonna take the prompt we got from the describe command and then get 10 more of those similar prompts, okay? Now it says, what prompt would you like me to write in 10 different and creative ways? Just paste that prompt in, the one I had on Canva. Here it is. Now, just like that, here we go. One, two, three. It's gonna go down the list and give us 10 prompts to use. Now, to be completely honest with you, the few times I've been doing this, I have to say that these prompts I'm getting back from chat GPT, these have actually produced even better results than my first and original one. So I highly recommend utilizing this generator and this method for any prompt you may be using. So here we are back on chat GPT, and then here are all these prompts right here. Amazing. And then just by looking at some of these, I could pretty much say that these are going to definitely create some very good looking images. So this is the first thing you can do to really level up any sort of prompt you're going to get. Okay, here's the next way. Now we're back over here in Canva. And what we're going to take advantage of now is what Canva has, and that's called Magic Write. So now I want you to go ahead and highlight this whole entire prompt. Once it's highlighted, now you can see this little prompt box that appears right above it, and it's called Magic Write. Click on that. Now, click on Magic Write. Here is where you can make things go to the next level with Canva. Their AI capabilities can also generate or rewrite prompts as well. So what I'll do is I like this one that's called Sprinkle Fairy Dust. Go ahead and select that. Now you could see it leaves the same original prompt here, but now you sprinkled that fairy dust, it's going to give you this one. So it's different. And in my opinion, it's going to actually be a little bit better as well. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. First one is a wide angle view. The second one with the sprinkle fairy dust, a panoramic vista unfolds in the heavens where celestial jewels and the ethereal dance of the aurora illuminate the night canvas. Look at the two differences right here, okay? The first option, pretty cut and dry, pretty simple. But now with the second one, Canva Gatus, with that sprinkle fairy dust, some of these words and adjectives are things I couldn't have thought of off the top of my head. So that's another amazing tool that you can use in Canva to really leverage and improve all these prompts. I highly recommend using the prompt generator in ChatGPT and then this one in Canva, this method in Canva too. Okay, so again, if I like these prompts, that's where you can then copy this prompt and then 
then also come back over here to your database and then put them in one of your databases to keep up with it. So with that said, let's go to our final step. And this is going to be the funnest one for you. This is where we're going to come back over here into the databases. And I have both these databases open. Both of them have a gallery for unique keywords. So here is the one in Leonardo AI. And then I also have the one over here in the mega prompts. So the mega prompts one and the Leonardo AI one don't necessarily have the same ones because some work better in Leonardo. So they're not included in this one, but nonetheless, here's what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to come in here and we're going to look at these specific keywords and then try one and add it into one of these prompts. Okay. So for an example, one of my favorite ones are going to be bioluminescent. I really like what bioluminescent makes. And I also like photoluminescent. I like the way this style turns out. Okay bioluminescent, photoluminescent, and then even electroluminescent, all with that sort of neon glow. And then another one, I really like this one for spiral verse. Okay. So let me take a few of these keywords. What we're going to do next is figure out the prompt that we like. Okay. So let's go back to this wide angle one right here. Okay. This is the one we're going to work with. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Okay. And just to keep up with it, I'm going to paste it down here again. Okay. So just so I don't get distracted, I'm going to go ahead and remove these right here just so we can really focus on the original one right here. Okay. So going back to our databases, let's figure out what keyword we want to use. So I'm also going to copy this keyword photo luminescence. Okay. Go back to my doc. And now I'm simply going to just place that word in front of any other word that I want to appear with this adjective. Okay. So a wide angle view of the sky. Okay. I'm going to do of the sky comma, and I'm going to paste in photoluminescence comma, the stars in the night sky and the aurora. Okay. And now I'm going to say a car, but I'm going to put a photoluminescence car is driving. Okay. Simple. Now take this prompt and now try it to see what this could generate. And then I'll also try the same exact prompt using a few other keywords. Okay. The results are in, and I have to tell you very impressive. We'll look at the ones in mid journey, and then we'll look at the ones in Leonardo AI very quickly. But if I come back over here into Canva in, into my Canva doc, you could see how I structured each prompt with the unique keyword. And then another one of my favorites is going to be like a Pixar or a DreamWorks style. Now keep in mind in these databases on the left hand side are going to be all of these different views that I've already have structured for you. The keyword in this case would be a DreamWorks style animation. This looks exactly like Shrek. So if you wanted your image to now look like a DreamWorks or a Pixar style, you would then just utilize these specific keywords. So like this one here of the Madagascar line, you can see what the prompt says, okay, in the style of DreamWorks animation. So okay. the specific keywords I'm using today might work for your image or they might not. The point is, is to know where and how to put the placement of a unique keyword in your prompt to generate a really unique looking image. So if we go back over here to mid journey, let's take a look at some of these images. Okay. This was using the ethereal gradient style. This might be my favorite, this keyword right here. It works for a lot of images. And then as we scroll down, let's look at the bioluminescent one. That's very cool too. Okay. The next Next one we have up is going to be the spiral verse neon fractal lighting. That's cool. And then last but not least, we have the photoluminescence one. So that was how they looked in mid journey. Now let's quickly look at the ones Leonardo AI made for us. The first one we're going to look at now, keep in mind, these prompts are the same exact ones. I just chose the same prompt for every image. And so here is this first one. This is going to be with the ethereal gradient keyword. Okay. And then just look at what a fascinating job this did for these images right here for the ethereal gradient one. The reason why I love this so much much is because of the mixed tones and then the gradient looking sky. It does a perfect job really making that sky look beautiful. In this one, we're using Kino XL. It's missing the cars, but nonetheless, look how beautiful the sky looks. The next one is Electro Illuminescent. Very good job. Bioluminescent. This is pretty good too. Look at the lighting on the road. I love that neon light kind of sticks out a little bit. This one looks beautiful. And then even this one looks fantastic. I love the way it made these hot air balloons have that orange neon glow. And then the road has those neon lines depicting cars quickly driving by. And then the last but not least one is photoluminescence. Great job right here. I think this looks beautiful with the Northern lights. Okay. There you have it. There is the new describe command in mid journey. If you utilize these other three hacks, you're going to get even better prompts. In my opinion, you're going to use the chat GPT prompt generator. You're also 
also going to go into Canva Magic Right. If you have access to Canva Magic Right, there'll be a link in my description to get it free for 30 days. Then the third hack is to then go and explore the databases or come up with your own fascinating and unique keyword. Put the keyword either in front of or right after the subject that you want. And then that's where you're going to get these really cool looking images. So let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear about what sort of images you were able to generate. And thank you so much for watching this video. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to know when all these videos come out. Until then, we'll see you next time.